Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Today topic is boiler corrosion and castric embrittlement. This is a topic in boiler troubles. In last session, we already discussed this scale and sludge priming and foaming. So finally, this is the sixth video on water technology. You can watch all my previous videos in my channel. The link was provided in the description. And uh, I just recall the what is boiler, what is boiler water, and what is the usage of boilers. So boilers are called stream generators. The water fed into the boiler for the production of stream is called boiler feed water. When you pass the water into the boiler by using heat energy, that water will be evaporated. The evaporated water can be used in different industries like power generation, food processing, food industries, paper industry, textile, building material, and heating, heating engineering everywhere. So there is a, uh, plenty of applications of the uh, water vapor. So uh, how boiler troubles are generated also we discussed uh, when you have when you are passing water which having the hardness causing salts or other impurities they will create problems to the boilers so we have a different types of problems in that boiler corrosion and castic amendment is going to discuss today. So what is boiler corrosion? So we know the we all know the corrosion, destruction of metal from its surface by interacting with the environment is called corrosion. So same way, boiler material involved in corrosion that is called boiler corrosion. Mainly the corrosive atmosphere in the boilers are so dissolved oxygen, dissolved CO2, and dissolved mineral acids. Okay, because of these dissolved O2 and CO2 and mineral acid like HCl, H2SO4. So boiler involved in corrosion and in this topic how this oxygen is entered into the water and this entered water how interact with the iron and how can we remove the oxygen from the boiler. So like that we will going to learn in the case of CO2 and mineral acid also. So that's why how it generates, how it reacts and how can we remove. So these things we are going to discuss here. First one is because of dissolved oxygen. So it's a natural tendency of oxygen to immerse into the water. So some of the oxygen always uh, uh, dissolved into the oxygen water. So that is called dissolved oxygen. This dissolved oxygen is very important for drinking water also. It gives the freshness and also it is very important for the aquatic life. So all animals in the aquatic life, they are breathing oxygen which is present in the uh, water. Okay, this is the dissolved oxygen. So how this dissolved oxygen creates problems in boilers? When the oxygen is there, so oxygen in water, so iron metal, boiler is nothing but it is made by iron or steel. So now iron metal interact with the oxygen in presence of water it producing FeOH taken twice. It producing FeOH taken twice. Already we learned this uh, equation in wet corrosion mechanism. So this is nothing but wet corrosion mechanism. In presence of moisture, in presence of moisture, it will absorb the oxygen and iron involved in corrosion. Iron zero state here. If you observe here, iron zero state here. Iron plus two. Increasing of oxidation is oxidation state is called oxidation. So who involved in oxidation? They only involved in corrosion. Here uh, iron involved in corrosion. Furtherly, it is interacted with the oxygen. It forms a rust. Fe2O3, 2H2O. Generally, we are called as rust. So, like that, oxygen present in the water that is called dissolved oxygen interacts with the iron and destroys the iron. And how can we remove this dissolved oxygen? By adding sodium sulfide to the water. If you add sodium sulfide, Na2SO3 to water, it absorbs the oxygen present in the water. Dissolved oxygen it absorbs the dissolved oxygen and it produces the sodium sulfate Na2SO4 so 2 moles of sodium sulfate absorbs the 1 mole of oxygen and forms 2 mole of sodium sulfate and another thing is by adding hydrogen when you add hydrogen to water it produces nitrogen gas nitrogen gas and also produces water so in these two adding of hydrogen is best option why because we are producing inert nitrogen gas this inert nitrogen gas will not affect any boiler material but in the case of sodium sulfate, you are removing oxygen, but you are creating sodium sulfate 
it is also make a problem in the boiler in the form of sludge or scale that's why so anyway we can remove the oxygen but hydrogen adding is very best option to remove the oxygen in mechanical way also we can remove oxygen i will explain in the later slides so next one is co2 how this co2 is generated in the water and how it is interact with the um, boiler material and how can we remove this co2 so temporary hardness causing salt if the boiler feed water what the water you are passing into the boiler if that water having temporary hardness causing salt temporary hardness causing salts means calcium bicarbonate and magnesium bicarbonate if if your water contains calcium and magnesium bicarbonate during the stream generation they involved in decomposition stream generation mean we are heating water up to high temperatures so that means the salts present in the water also experiencing the same temperature so at this temperature calcium bicarbonate is uh, precipitated as calcium carbonate and magnesium bicarbonate is precipitated as magnesium hydroxide but in this process co2 gas is releasing so because of this scale or sludge is formed and because of co2 gas so boiler corrosion is occur sorry boiler corrosion is occur co2 is a gas that co2 gas still present in the boiler now co2 gas interact with the water and produces the uh, carbonic acid this carbonic acid interact with the iron it produces the iron carbonate you can see here iron zero state iron metallic iron is converting into uh, ionic iron fe plus 2 so this is nothing but corrosion so iron involved in corrosion by releasing the hydrogen gas so if you are familiar with the electrochemistry so you can see the electrochemical series electrochemical series applications iron is a anodic material it interact with the acids and it produces the hydrogen gas if you are in interesting in electrochemistry you can observe these things there also and how can we remove this co2 gas so when you add ammonium hydroxide to the water ammonium hydroxide to the water this ammonium hydroxide interacts with the co it forms a ammonium carbonate ammonium carbonate and water so we can remove this ammonium carbonate by other process so like that we can remove this co2 so here you can if you observe how co2 is generated and how it is interact with the iron material and how can we remove the co2 these things we are learning here and oxygen or co2 or any other gases can be removed by mechanical deaeration method that means without adding any chemicals we can also remove the O2 and CO2 gases which are present in the water. So just think when you are keep mm, soft drinks in the freeze, when you are taken out from the freeze and you are open the cap, the gas present in the soft drinks, what gas? CO2 gas. The CO2 gas present in the soft drinks will be evaporate, easily escape from the bottle. That means when you are increasing temperature, when you are decreasing pressure when you are decreasing pressure and when you are increasing temperature so all gases all gases will be not present in the liquid they will be evaporate from the water the same thing we will apply here so here we are increasing temperature when you are increasing temperature by passing water into a, this machine so mechanical deaerator so you are you are passing water from here water from here so different slates is there these are the mechanical stirrers they are mixing the water so and also you are heating by the heating coils the all gas will be removed by the vacuum from here we are sucking the air present in the water so like that we can remove air and co2 present in the water finally we get a deaerated water this water will pass over the into the boilers like that we can remove the uh, dissolved gases like CO2, oxygen and any other gas also we can remove by this process. So next one is acids, mineral acids, HCl, H2SO, how they are generated in the boiler water. If the boiler feed water having the permanent hardness causing salts like uh, calcium chloride, calcium sulfate, magnesium chloride, magnesium sulfate, during the heat generation, they release the acids. For example, magnesium chloride interact the water, they produce the HCl gas and calcium sulfate interact the water, they produce H2SO4. So like that calcium chloride, magnesium sulfate also produces H2SO4 and HCl respectively. So like that when the water, when water having permanent hardness causing salt, they produces the acids. 
in the last slide we discussed when the water having the temporary hardness causing salts they produces the they produces the co2 gas when the water having permanent hardness gases they produces the hcl and h2so4 uh, minerals okay so now these minerals interact with the iron fe plus 2 hcl gives fecl to h2 this already you studied in the uh, uh, wet corrosion in the acidic medium this is the reaction wet corrosion in the acidic medium fe to hcl gives fecl2 plus h2 and this fecl2 further interact with the water it produces the feoh taken twice okay so like that it produce continuously again it producing the hcl it continuously involved in corrosion so acidic environment corrosion rate is very high then how can we remove this hcl hcl is acid we know acids interact with the bases and they they neutralized and they form salts like that we can remove the acids by adding quantitatively amount of base so like that we can remove the acids so these are the main problems uh, because of a corrosion okay so what are those dissolved oxygen co2 and mineral acids how they are generated in the water how they interact with the iron material how can we remove these things like this sequence if you read they are very easy to understand the next one is caustic embrittlement before going to caustic embrittlement let me tell something the discovery action the ability of liquid to flow in narrow spaces again as to the gravity is called capillary action when you keep a very narrow tube into the water you can observe water level is higher in the tube than the water level in the tap tab uh, tub okay if you see water level is, is there in the tub but when you keep the very narrow tube the water is climbed into the tube this type of action is called uh, capillary action it's depending on two things one is size diameter of the tube diameter of the tube and next one is nature of the solvent so if the diameter tube is decreases capillary action is increases and the solvent nature also depending on the which some solvent shows the higher capillary reaction some solvent doesn't show the capillary reactions so but NaOH is a good capillary action showing solution NaOH flows into the minute hair crack crackings usually present in the boilers material by capillary reaction so every metal have porous structure porous means a small minute holes on the surface of the metal so in the boilers also the boiler also having so many pore structures so this NaOH if water contains NaOH that water having a capillary action they will enter into this minute hair crackings by capillary action and it leads to intercrystalline cracking this intercrystalline cracking is called caustic embrittlement so caustic embrittlement is also one type of boiler corrosion this is also boiler corrosion but particularly we are studying about caustic embrittlements it means it is very dangerous compared to boiler corrosion boiler corrosion occurs on the surface of the metal because of o2 co2 and mineral acid but this boiler corrosion caustic embrittlement because of naoh or alkaline water it leads to intercrystalline cracking surface is looking good but inner side it is already going to damage at one point suddenly the total instrument will failure it leads to total damage of the flange that's why it is a very dangerous and very important corrosion that is called caustic embrittlement so when water having high alkaline nature when water having high alkaline nature that mean water having na2co3 like these compounds when the high boilers high boilers mean high pressure and high temperature boilers they enter they decompose as a naoh this naoh has a capillary reaction they enter into the minute parts of the boilers so in inside the boiler they interact with the iron and they produces the sodium peronite that means inside iron is damaging outside iron is looking good but innerly it is become weaking so you can see here if you see the inner structure there is a porous structure inside iron oxide uh, sodium hydroxide will go and they interact with the iron and damages the iron so this is called caustic embrittlement this can be easily avoided by adding sodium hydroxide means it is a base so to avoid the basic nature alkaline nature of the water you need to add some acid 
so but you always uh, need to add proper amount qualitative quantitatively amount only you need to add if you add more acids it leads to boiler corrosion because of acids if you add more bases it leads to boiler corrosion because of alkaline nature so always by titrating the water by knowing the amount how much of amount we need to add perfect number perfect time quantity of water we should add and another thing is so by adding tannin lignin to the boiler so uh, when you add this tannin or lignin they cover the micro pores of the boiler if once you cover the micro pores of the boiler now if water having NaOH will not enter into this minute particles even though there is NaOH it is unable to go inside the boilers okay like that you can prevent the boiler corrosion like caustic embrittlement another one is by adjusting pH up to 8 to 9 so if you always keep pH NaOH mean NaOH pH is uh, high it's a strong acid its pH is uh, up to 14 or 13 so if you always um, aware of pH up to 8 to 9 you can avoid the caustic embrittlement so this is the example for the uh, caustic embrittlement where the caustic embrittlement is goes there is a concentration cell appears so that means the concentration of NaOH differs of the boiler outer side is one type of concentration inner side is one type of concentration it leads concentration cell that means differential aeration type corrosion will occur here it leads to fits cavities holes and it is a fitting corrosion accelerated corrosion it gives this severe damage to the plant so this is the boiler corrosion and caustic embrittlement under the boiler troubles so thank you for listening please watch my all videos in the corrosion electrochemistry and other topics so please subscribe my channel. Thank you for watching.